Bhavinas back here with part 4 in which I am going to discuss about the treatment plan of both acute as well as chronic maxillary sinusitis. So coming to the treatment of acute phase of maxillary sinusitis is you need to go ahead with broad spectrum antibiotics which are going to cover both aerobic as well as the anaerobic bacteria. So nasal drops are used, antihistamines are given regularly, okay, levocetrazine is a choice, steam inhalation, okay, and anti-inflammators are given. I mean, most of the things are well known by you. Coming to the chronic phase, so whenever you have a chronic phase, okay, uh, you need to find out the etiology. So underlining cause should be treated first. So if the underlining cause is either dental infection or foreign body or a polyp you can see uh, nasal polyps sometimes extending into this sinusitis or sinus spaces or it may be due to the nasal infection that is being transmitted to this they should be identified and they should be treated first etiology should be treated first so you can do a uh, antral wash uh, similar to your gastric levis with an antiseptic solution or you can perform nasal antrotomy, I have already discussed, which is done in the inferior meatus. Or you can go ahead with the Cardwell look operation to remove these polyps as well as the foreign bodies which are inside. So apart from this, you can go with an anti-inflammators and antibiotics. And the important thing to be added is the advanced treatment, that is FESS, that is functional endodontic sinus surgery okay maybe aims or, or the latest uh, based if you see the recent need 2020 uh, i think there are chances that they can ask questions related to this uh, recent advanced techniques that is fess okay so the next important aspect is about the oroantral communication so as already discussed, it is a communication between the antrum and the oral cavity. And it is called as oroantral fistula whenever the epithelium is formed between these two spaces. Okay, So fistula, I hope you know the definition of fistula, which is a communication between the two cavities. So these two cavities are the one is antrum and the second one is oral cavity. So whenever there is an epithelium lining form, then it is called as fistula. So etiologists can be while extracting the posterior teeth, especially first and second pre first and second molars, or whenever while removing the broken root piece of these teeth from the sockets, or periapical lesions of the upper posterior teeth, or mid facial trauma or osteomyelitis of maxilla or sometimes the malignancies that are involved in the maxilla or maxillary sinusitis can lead to this communication and there are few tests which helps in confirmation of these communication one is probe can be used to detect and confirm the communication you can use a bubble test or you can use a nose blowing test okay so so these are the important things that you have to make a note about the confirmation. And the sequel of this oroantral communication is due to the sinus formation and it spread, formation of fistula. Then the patient will complain of voice incompetency, food particles entering into the sinus, pus discharge, pleurent discharge, halitosis, lots of things will be further. Radiographically, you can see Okay, this is a maxillary first molar area. Okay, and there is some foreign body in the maxillary sinusitis. The confirmation of foreign body in the maxillary sinusitis. So the treatment of oroantral communication is by whenever the communication is less than 1.0.5 millimeters, just suture the marginal gingiva on either sides of the socket and protect the area by giving a partial denture. And these are the different uh, flaps that are used. One is buccal advancement flap. Most commonly asked question the other names. Ashel is that is palatal flap. 
buccal pad of fat combination of both that is from the buccal side as well as from the palatal side you can use tongue flap or in the case some cases you can use a foreign uh, material like gold foil or acrylic plug to protect this communication so the general principles that are follow are followed are general things uh, make sure that the flap should have adequate blood supply to prevent the flap necrosis always try to give insertion on the sound bone and whenever the wound is there make sure that uh, the wound should not be sutured under tension and the flap design should be adequately visible and accessible the next comes is already discussed these are the flaps that are used a combination of both buccal as well as the palatal one so these are the diagrams okay this is a buccal flap uh, which is reflected from the buccal side okay so one is sliding flap and one is advancement flap both these are the buccal flaps and next comes is the palatal flap where you where a palatal flap is taken and extended okay this is a palatal flap next course is rotational advancement palatal flap where the flap is taken and it is rotated and advanced to this space the next one is submucosal connective tissue flap and hinge flap okay so these are the palatal flaps and then the last goes is the combination of both means both the buccal as well as the palatal see this both the buccal is a combination of both the flaps out of which bipedicel flap means this is a communication area where you're going to give an insertion okay and you're going to drag this and you're going to suture this so where you're going to leave an uncovered area uncovered area for the granulation tissue formation so this is a bipedicel flap so uh, apart from this the limited size of the local flaps makes it difficult to close the larger fistulas so if it is smaller one you can accompany it so therefore distance flap has been used flaps taken from so the flaps taken from forehead tongue temporalis buccal fat extremities can be used as a distant flaps so i hope you remember one is buccal flap one is palatal flap different buccal flaps different palatal flaps combination of both and finally the distant flap the next one is even if you are not able to take a distant flap then you need to go for a foreign metal that is alloplastic grafts that can be a gold foil titanium foil or it can be a polymethyl methyl acrylate that is an acrylic plug or you can use a collagen or hydroxyapatite block or the fibrin glue any of these can be used and make a note i hope you remember this antral packing like once the surgery is done you're going to pack the uh, complete space with the antrum and while packing that you have to use this white head varnish okay the composition of white head varnish and this white head varnish is a commonly asked question and given in 2017 neat okay so this was repeated so give some importance to this area okay next comes is the post operative instructions most of the instructions will be same as your extraction that is advised not to blow the nose as it creates the pressure and at the site of the closure of the communication advised not to open mouth wide because stretching of the sutures no rinsing gargling no smoking avoid sneezing limited mouth opening advised nasal drops sutures should be removed after 7 days anti most of the things are well known okay there is nothing new to be added to your notes and sometimes uh, the root tips or the roots may enter into the sinus because i have shown you a iop where you can see a foreign body in the maxillary sinus similarly roots can enter so uh, you have to confirm it on clinical on that particular case by observing the root tips and radiographically by taking an iop for the confirmation and the roots in the sockets are removed by various methods okay different methods can be tried uh, out of which the last and the important one is cardwell look okay so you can try different one like uh, socket apexes uh, is wide and twice the size of the root apex and you can you can try to pull it off or irrigating with lots of saline and pushing into the socket so that uh, so so that the flush out can remove the one or a thin long uh, rubber gaze is pushed uh, into the sinus through the socket and removed in a single jerk by which it can get locked or it can be removed or by using a high vacuum suction or uh, they can be different approaches okay but mainly uh, we need to focus more on the 
card will look operation so i'm going to discuss this in the next part so indications it is a technique that is used to remove remove the teeth or root or any foreign body in the sinus nothing new everything is known in the case of trauma of the mid facial fractures when the roof of the sinus is fractured and the floor of the orbit is dropped okay it is the best way of correcting so this is a specific condition where you have to make it and you know that it is used to remove the sinus wall or the nasal polyps in the case of your chronic sinusitis already discussed nothing new and it can be used in the removal of the cysts in the sinus removal of polyps in the sinus known and management of hematoma of the sinus mainly occurring from the nose bleeding small malignancies so most of the things are already known all these are known the only thing that you have to focus on this okay how the procedure either you can go for a la or general anesthesia the lip is elevated vertical insertion distal to that of the lateral as well as the distal to that of the first molar are made okay make sure you give a gingival clavicular insertion or a horizontal insertion made few mm above the attached gingiva in the given zone okay so the next all is make sure you prevent the damage to that of inferior alveolar nerve okay make a note about this this is an important right next one on the facial wall of the sinus with the help of a bar and a hand piece make a opening of 0.5 cm mostly it is at the canine fossa area then the opening is done antiseptic solution is inserted uh, everything whatever that is their uh, opening process uh, operator is uh, and then the sinus is irrigated with antiseptic solution flap is placed back and sutured over the bone okay so i was talking about fess that is functional endoscopic sinus surgery so this is this is a diagram based question they can give so here he is trying to operate the ethmoid sinus okay so through the nose uh, with an endoscopic surgery that is fess so fess is also called as intranasal endoscopic technique okay uh, that allows the establishment of adequate sinus drainage and it helps in clearing all the blocks and removing the things okay so this is an important area where they can ask a new advanced based question uh, thank you all for now i'm done with maxillary sinus in a few parts uh, i think this is more than sufficient both from the anatomy histology applied aspects as well as the clinical features with the treatment plan and with some latest advances so this is dr strikan signing off from team mds concord